Hey guys, Robert Fraser here with Sterling Trials Take Kit Fishing. I want to do a quick video for you guys and I'll try to make this kind of quick for you um, so it's not something super long to watch. That's why I'm starting a YouTube channel. Um, once I get it up and going and started, I'll let you guys know the name of it and everything so you can go ahead and go to that and subscribe and hopefully uh, watch some pretty cool videos on catching some fish. Um, basically what I'm going to go over with you guys I had just posted something about being a comfort zone fisherman and that's what I was and um, whenever I started doing more and more research on these largemouth bass and fishing largemouth bass and which is my favorite fish to catch um, I started learning a whole lot and all these things that I'm learning I definitely want to share with you guys and I guarantee you if you take these things into consideration you guys are going to have a whole lot better luck. Um, it told me that as I was doing the research, I read a lot of times, if you follow this, if you follow this and do this, you're going to have better luck. And I have. By all means, I have increased my fish size and quantity ten times fold. Um, so the first thing I want to share with you guys is to always be prepared for that big fish, for that personal best. You want to be prepared by all means. So I on personally on my rods... And when it comes to my bait casters, you've probably seen a couple videos of mine and seen that I've said that I cast 25 pound test braided. Um, I cast that no matter what. And sometimes I will go up in um, the test. Uh, it depends on if I'm fishing, you know, brushy areas. If I'm fishing brushy areas and things like that, I will go up about five to 10 pound test um, just because of yanking your bait through those it's a lot more comfortable knowing that my line is, is thicker and stronger and can handle me jerking it and won't get you know chewed up too much by the weeds and the branches and things sticking in the water um, so I fished that 25 pound test braided line on my bait casters and I use spider wire and I use the moss color um, I really really like that color um, all honesty, what I'm about to show you is tying, tying on a leader, and I'm about to show you the knot that I actually discovered and started using during a tournament. I was trying to tie the blood knot, and um, if you guys know what that is, it's, it's kind of an easy knot, but at the same time, when you're under stress in a tournament, it makes it a very difficult knot. Um, and it kept slipping, kept pulling through, and I was like, man, i got to figure this out really quick in order to have this leader, or else I'm not going to catch the fish. My pound test is so high that those fish will see it almost in any condition and be spooked. It doesn't look like a natural bait with that line tied to it, so they just get spooked. Anyways, Kiki, hush. Anyways, um, and they'll get spooked, and you don't, you don't want that. So I'm going to show you real quickly on how this knot that I, I started tying, I don't know if it's a knot or not, but after I tied it on and I used this leader, I caught... Uh, two, three more fish, two of those being in the three pound range, and I didn't have a problem with the knot, so I'm going to continue to use it as long as it does good. Um, if it has any problems, you guys will be the first person to know because I'll say, Stop using it, stop using it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how I figured that out and how I tie it on. Now, the first thing that I do is I use 15 pound test for my leader and that uh, I use um, red label for it if you can see it here 15 pound test so it's still pretty thick but once it gets in the water it's pretty much invisible um, so with that I go ahead and I just bend the line over just like so if you can see that I bend it over and I go ahead and just tie a knot right here in the line sorry my dog's whining she's I've got her up late and she probably needs to go potty before she goes to bed and I'll take her out here in a second but anyways I go ahead and I tie a knot in the line right there like that to where it leaves this loop okay just like so you've got that little bit of access right there all right now I go ahead and clip that down just like I would if I was tying on that hook which I just pinch the knot and then I cut right at my finger if you guys have seen some of my videos I've shown you that's how I cut it it's just a preference. It leaves a little bit to allow for slippage, but not enough to even cause a problem or be too visible or anything like that. So on my leader, I go ahead and I tie that right there and leave that loop. Now on my braided line, I actually tie my braided line as if I'm tying on a jig or a hook or anything like that. 
and the tie that I use the most, you go ahead and do the same thing. You're going to fold your line over, okay? Now stick that folded in through your loop of your leader, just like so, and bring it around. Now go ahead and tie a knot around your leader loop, just like you did to create that loop in the leader. You're just going to tie a knot in it. Just like so. So I tied a knot around my loop with my braided line. If you can see that there. Hopefully you guys are getting this and hopefully you can see it. If not, definitely down in the comments let me know. So maybe I can do a more, a little bit more of a detailed video for you. Let me bring my rod down a little bit and be able to show you better. Just like that. Now, opening up the loop of the braided side, I pull the entire leader through that loop. Okay? So you've got your loop here, if it'll work with me here for a second. Doing it like this and not just, and showing you guys is a little bit more difficult than just doing it and knocking it out. But for video purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and cut some off of this leader here, not what I'd usually fish. What I usually fish with a leader is about three to four feet, um, sometimes four to five feet, it all kind of depends. But I go ahead and I pull my leader all the way through just like that okay with pulling that all the way through go ahead and grab your excess of your braided line and the line that leads to the rod and you're gonna pull it tight as if you would on a hook and with 15 pound test line you're not gonna break through it or anything like that when you tie it down all right it's actually a recommended knot for braided line it's actually on the back of the spider wire box is the knot that I use onto my leader that I've already got tied. So you see I've got two knots right there. One of them is on the leader that I used to tie that loop and then I treated that loop as if it was the eye of my hook and I tied the recommended braided knot on the back of the spider wire box right there on that and I showed you guys how to do that. Um, sorry that was so quick but if you have any questions about it, feel free to let me know. Say, hey, I didn't catch that. Can you do just a video of tying it? And I'll be more than happy to do so. But I go ahead and cut off the excess of my braided line right here. Go ahead and snip that real quick. That braided line's strong, so I gotta, it takes a couple snips of just plain scissors. I've got braid line cutters that I wear around my neck during tournaments so that I can cut it quicker, but so you've got it just like that. Now as far as this goes, I've never had a problem. Whenever I showed a guy at the tournament, that's how I was using it. He said, um, do you have a problem with it snagging in your reel or any on, on your eyelets of your rod or anything like that? And I didn't, I didn't have any problems with it at all. Um, it worked out great. I was catching fish on it. I actually got hung up a couple times and was actually able to pull myself free with these knots and they didn't slip or anything. Um, it's worked out great for me. I don't know if anybody else does it this way or uses this, but it's worked out great. So I recommend giving it a try and tying on some leader if you're using that high pound test braided line so those fish don't see it. But just like I said, um, the first step of catching those bigger fish and, and boating those bigger fish is being prepared for those bigger fish. Um, now if I get you know my new personal best on the line, I'm prepared for. I'm prepared for him. I'm ready for that fish and I'll get it on the boat and I won't be more I'll be more concerned about it throwing the hook or anything like that than breaking my line. Um, which is good. That's what you want. You want to be confident, you want to be prepared, and you don't want to have any worries other than keeping that hook in that fish's mouth. Because when it's big and it's ready to fight, boy will it fight. I hope that helps you guys. And um, if you have any other questions, feel free to go down in the comments and let me know. Alright, thanks.